Hello and welcome. My name's Hayden Fowlson from BlenderTutorials.org, and today we're going to be talking about why rigid body constraints do not animate beyond 250 frames and what we can do about it to fix it. I've got this quick simulation going on here that we'll make together, and then as you can see, as it reaches frame 250, it will stop simulating the rigid bodies. Now the reason for this, for the quick answer before we jump into recreating this scene, is because uh, the rigid bodies controls actually found under the scene properties. So if we go to the scene properties and then under rigid body world, we can tell the cache to end at a different frame. By default, it's set to 250, which is why our rigid body animation ends at frame 250. So if you want the simulation to end at, let's say frame 300, we have to change this end value to 300. Now, let's just, you know, keep on going and let's see what happens now that we've changed this. So as you can see, we're gonna come up to frame 250 and it's gonna continue simulating. Perfect. Okay, before we start building this scene, I just wanna let you all know that blendertutorials.org is coming along very well. For those of you who aren't aware, blendertutorials.org is a new service that I'm creating to help beginners, especially, get into Blender far more quickly than taking a course or learning by themselves on YouTube. I really want blendertutorials.org to be a resource that I would have loved to have when I was learning Blender. I am super excited to start sharing information with you about what this service is going to be. Um, it's still not exactly ready yet, so I'm going to have to hold off on that a little bit longer. But if you're keen, definitely subscribe to this channel, or you can head over to blendertutorials.org directly to sign up to our newsletter. Okay, back to the tutorial. Now, how we created this scene is actually quite simple. I'm going to delete everything here and start from scratch. The first thing I do is create a plane that is going to act as my little pusher. Then I can create a cube. And let's just go into edit mode for this cube by pressing tab, control B to bevel it and use your mouse wheels to add some segments to the bevel. Perfect. Tab out back into object mode and you can duplicate this object with shift and D a couple of times. Perfect. Now that we've done that, let's just select these objects here. Go to Object, Rigid Body, Add Active, and that will turn on active rigid bodies in the physics properties for all of these objects. Similarly, we're going to select this plane here. Go to Object, Rigid Body, Add Passive, because we want this one to be the collider. And now if we press play, let's just go back to the beginning, we'll see that our rigid bodies are working. So to get this plane here to sort of jump up and down randomly, what I'm gonna do is set one location keyframe at the start of my simulation. So make sure your little blue bar is at zero, I for insert while making sure your plane selected and set a location keyframe, which will show up here. After that, I'm going to change my workspace to a graph editor and navigate down to the Z location channel. I'm then going to go into the sidebar of this graph editor by pressing N for Nelly, then add a noise modifier. By doing that, we'll see that we're getting some noise in the movement currently. I'm just going to increase the strength a little bit, as well as increase the scale here. The scale is just going to make those changes take a longer period of time. Now you might be noticing that this isn't actually affecting our rigid bodies at the moment. And the reason for that is because we're animating this passive rigid body and we need to tell it that it is an animated object. So navigate over to your physics properties and then under settings, check animated. Doing so, you can see that our boxes are actually following our passive plane. 
And let's just, you know, go a little bit wild with this. There we go. Let's increase that strength. There we go. Bit excessive, but uh, a lot of fun. So I hope that this short tutorial has been of use to you. If it has, smash that like button and leave a comment down below as to what you might use this with. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falzon from BlenderTutorials.org signing off.